Hi, I am Mama Mo Crazy, and I know that when you're thrown into that role of being the caregiver, it's so easy to be so overwhelmed and feel powerless, completely out of control. It doesn't have to be that way, though. We can be a powerful person in the lives of our loved one and for ourselves. I have seven fairly practical things that I would like to share with you. I have so many more, but I want to start with these seven because they're so important. So one of the things I want you to really focus on is that you are your loved one's patient advocate. That means that you can go to all kinds of meetings. You can talk to the doctors. You can talk to the nurses. You are the person who's going to hear what they have to say and know, is this the right thing for my loved one who just had a traumatic brain injury? The second thing is I want you to have a notebook. Now some people want to put notes into your phone. I still think that that piece of paper notebook, because you can flip through it differently um, than when you put it into your phone. So I would advocate and encourage you to have a notebook and a pen all the time. And in that notebook, you're going to ask questions. You're gonna have the questions, you're gonna think about them at three o'clock in the morning, and you're gonna write them down. And then when you go and talk to the doctors, the nurses, the therapists, um, everybody that's involved with your loved one, you're gonna have those questions ready. And right in the middle of when they're telling you something, ask your question. And then the other thing with that notebook is, they're going to tell you some long, complicated thing that means nothing to you in your really overwhelmed brain. And you just say, could you please spell that for me? Anytime you don't know what they're talking about and you've lost concentration because your brain has gone to oh, my loved one and your, your, your brain shuts down because you can't think anymore and you can't hear what they're telling you anymore, could you please spell that? That'll bring you a little bit back but also, if you can't come back to hear what they're saying, you're gonna have whatever that is that they were saying, even if it's so simple as, we'd like you to give your daughter more water. I said, could you please spell that for me? And they said, water, W-A-T-E-R. How simple, but it brought me back to another place of listening to what they had to say. Another thing I want you to pay attention to is this other question. It's, why are you recommending this? It's not an, an attack on them. You want to have your curiosity there so you understand why and you can support or think about or, or consider it or talk to people or look it up or do anything with it. Another thing that's really important for you to be focusing on is what can I do to support what's being told to me to do? for my loved one? What can I also do to support myself? Because you, as the caregiver, if you don't support yourself, it's just like in that airplane, you put it on yourself before you put it on your kid, because if you don't have enough oxygen in you, you can't give oxygen to your kid. So you've got to make sure that while you're taking care of your loved one, you do some things to support yourself. So we're going to have a lot of conversation about how we do that. Those doctors, nurses, and all those caregivers, they definitely know their stuff. And that's wonderful. And you know your loved one. Nobody lo knows your loved one as much as you do. So have confidence in yourself. And the most overarching everything is do everything with love. With love, love, love. Make sure you have love with everything that I've just suggested.